here with us on Overdrive. Now, the Bajaj Pulsar NS lineup of motorcycles are known to offer plenty of engine options at very affordable price tag. So, we are here to find out whether the updated NS160 and the 200 offer better ride quality as well. The NS200 had already gained one horsepower when the BS6 transition happened. The updated engine is compliant with the new OBD 2A emission norms, so no problems there. Now with that additional power and the reduction in weight, it has a power to weight ratio of 155 PS to a ton. So if you think about it, if you are a spec chic nerd, that is better power to weight than even the Pulsar 220F, which was once called the fastest Indian. It's also more than the new Pulsar N250. So if you need good power to weight ratio, this is the best pulsar in the lineup. While the improvement in the power to weight ratio may be hard to notice, you are likely to feel the improved front end stability offered by these new forks. We didn't have complaints about the outgoing NSS handling dynamics, but the new one feels more planted even through mid corner bumps like the ones that are prevalent through the bowl on Bajaj's chart and test track. The lighter wheels also make for slightly sharper turn-ins and the new forks complement that attitude. But going hot into the corner can make the front feel skittish. The rear suspension could have done with a slightly stiffer setup too. The improvement in handling is a lot more noticeable on the NS160 and as before, its motor feels peppier than the 200 when it comes to initial or low-end power delivery. Both these engines are peaky though and love to be ridden at the limit and the new handling package complements that approach. So while the upgrades seem minor, anyone who loves the pulsers for the handling dynamics will appreciate the efforts put into improving the NS. Have they done enough though? Maybe not. The new NS line still leaves one wanting for a slipper clutch and a few more things. Honestly, I have a bit of a soft corner for the 200 NS for the way it handles, for the way it rides, but then we have to go nitpicking. Like I remember right from the first 200 NS that I rode up until the new one, I've always felt that the brakes could have been better, especially the front brake. Under hard braking, it often goes a little too hard. This is even true for the non-ABS variants. So it's essentially the oil heating up and the brake just not feeling confident enough. In fact, you can sometimes not have any braking from the front at all. You're solely relying on the rear brakes or the engine braking. That front just goes very hard. There's probably maybe a millimeter of travel at the most and just doesn't work. And unfortunately, I've seen that happen even today at the track with the new 200. So I think they ought to have fixed that. Even with the newer brakes, there's still that issue. So I think it's down to the overheating of uh, the brake fluid or something to do with the master cylinder. I'm still not getting a clear answer from Bajaj on why that is happening. So that is one bit of it. The other bit, I think they ought to have gone with LED headlamps now. Come on, we are in 2023. Yes, I know that usually these headlamps in our kind of conditions, they work better than LED headlights, but going with the market requirement, going with what the rest of the competition is doing, LED headlights should have made it to this motorcycle by now. And I think it was also high time to do the Infinity console that they're doing on the other pulsers. Even the cheaper N160 gets it, but the NS160 or the 200 doesn't. So they should have definitely gone with the newer console. And I think there could have been a few quality improvements as well. Like for example, this rear foot peg, we know it's flimsy. We've seen it on the previous NS as well that it tends to go loose after a few years. You can already see a bit of play there. It tends to go loose, starts making those rattling sounds it's not a very good feeling. So that should have been improved. And what's with that side stand? They should have definitely improved that, that exposed little nut that you see on the side stand. I don't know, it just doesn't fit in there. It looks like it sticks out like a sore thumb. They should have definitely improved on that as well. So these few things ought to have been done now that the NS is sold. Despite these shortcomings, the NS200 remains my favorite in the Pulsar lineup. Maybe it's just me, but this is one bike on which I don't care about the lack of some new age equipment. Bajaj says that two-thirds of the NS models that they produce go to global markets. And Latin America, which is one of the biggest market, wouldn't have accepted a feature-rich NS with a higher price tag. And hence, the upgrades are restricted to the forks and the wheels alone. They could have done more, right? Mm, yeah. 
at least in terms of design they could have done better i agree i mean that design is is sort of aging now but but i don't know man after riding the motorcycle it just ignites those old memories of you know going up and down lavasa mutha ghat and then really gunning for it it still has that charm it still delivers right i mean the handling is just amazing yeah the uh, on the spec sheet the uh, upgrades uh, with the forks might uh, seem a very small upgrade but then when you ride it there's a huge difference in the performance the overall uh, riding dynamics has changed the handling has uh, improved there's the a front end feels so much more confident yeah yeah there's a big bump in uh, the overall handling of the bike i agree i mean it still lacks a few features when you look at the competition or even its own siblings right but then again if you simply want a bike that is mechanically sound you don't really care about the frills of bluetooth and led headlights and a very fancy looking instrumentation etc you want a motorcycle that gives you that on tap power in this segment you want a motorcycle that handles really well is very stable through corners stable on the highway etc i think this motorcycle still delivers i think it's still my cup of tea With that it's time for us to wrap up this week's edition of Overdrive but remember you can stay in touch with the team through Facebook Twitter as well as YouTube and you can follow our latest updates on Instagram we'll see you next week until then goodbye many thanks for watching